Hi, I'm Casey Deary and I'm here with uh, Virtual Horse Help and we are going to discuss how I begin the process of teaching the stop and then I'm also going to give you a few tips on riding a deaf one. So, from the very beginning I want to make sure that my horse's front feet are connected to my hands and what I mean by that is that anytime I draw the slack and pull back, whether I'm in a hackamore, a snaffle, or a bridle, I want to make sure that their feet come to my hand. So as I'm working on this, I'm not necessarily concerned about where that horse's neck and head is carried as much as I am where their feet go when I draw. I will never say whoa to my horse until they are 100% consistent drawing to a stop off of my hand. I always want to make sure that I have established the tools to teach this horse how to stop before I ever give him the signal. I never want him to think that whoa means to turn his head upside down or bounce or speed up as has happened to me in the past. So part of teaching my stop program has evolved from riding horses that can't hear. Obviously a deaf horse can't hear me say whoa. So that's where my emphasis in my stop program comes from their response off of my hand. On a deaf horse, to start that, to, to stop them period, I'm just going to pick my hand up. Now, for me as a rider, I'm going to go ahead and say whoa because it slows my timing down, it slows my hand down a little. So I say whoa for me to those deaf horses, but I don't say whoa to help them. So let me demonstrate here. In the very beginning, whether I'm walking, trotting, or loping, I'm just going to take the slack out and I want my horse's feet to come right back to me. So as this horse comes to my hand and their feet move, then I'm going to release as soon as they come to my hand. And in the beginning, they will not be soft like this mare is in the neck and, and chin there. So the very beginning stages of it, I'm going to release as soon as I get those feet off the ground. So that might be one step and then I let go. But I always have to be in a situation where I'm building confidence for that horse. I need them to be looking for the release so that they understand that when they get to that spot, I'm gonna let go. As that horse progresses, then I can always ask them to go faster or pull a little quicker with my hands. I'm not crazy about how this mare's back and a little bit crooked. But in the beginning, I'm not going to make a big deal of whether she moves her hip to the inside or to the outside. I just want her to acknowledge that when I pull, that her feet come to where my hand is pulling. So once I get contact with her feet and I get where I can draw her feet, her neck and chin will get softer and lower through that process. But my main goal here is that as I take her face, her shoulders come up and her feet go back. If I can establish that understanding that when my hand draws that her shoulder comes up, she will automatically bend her back and go to that stopping position. So then I'm going to go to a trot and a lope there, thereafter once they understand it. So there you can see she made a decent move to the ground and then her neck elevated at the end of it. So that tells me that when I drew, her feet were not connected all the way to my hand. I don't make a big deal of it, but I'm just gonna make sure that I've gone and done my homework and get her to where when I pull, her feet come to my hand. And there you can see as I kind of hustled those feet just a little, her wither elevated and you can see her, her hip drop a little. That's the same position that I'm looking for in the stop. Now then, I want to be able to do that at a full run 
before I ever ask this horse to stop with the, with the woe. But I will use that same process to establish the relationship between woe and stop. So I'm gonna go walking along. Whoa. There she stopped decent, but I'm still gonna say, come back to me. Whoa. 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 We seem to have a little pattern of her pushing her hip to the left there. Again, in the beginning stages, I'm not gonna make a big deal of that, but I might take her when I'm backing. Let me turn around here where you guys can see that. If I have one that continually backs that way, I'm gonna draw here, close that leg. When that hip moves to the other side of the line of her body, I'm gonna release. The line of her body is the straight line that I'm gonna draw from her pole through her wither to her hip. And I wanna make sure that if it's crooked, that when I push, as soon as it gets to that side of the line, that I release it. I don't necessarily have to back her in circles or mash my foot in there. I just have to make sure I release her when I get her to the opposite side of the line. Many horses need support in four key areas, joint, hoof, coat, and digestion. The Smart Combo and Smart Combo Ultra provide support for young and middle-aged horses in light to heavy work. Smart Combo Senior and Smart Combo Senior Ultra are designed specifically for older horses to help them enjoy their golden years and keep them going strong. Smart Combo Ultimate provides an unparalleled level of support for anyone wanting to give their horse the very best. Visit smartpack.com slash smartcombo to get started.